Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You can see from a, a bunch of this stuff that's laid out on the table here, we're gonna go over today some basic necessities to the backcountry rider. And heck, it's basically the necessities that I go with each and every day I ride. So today we're gonna talk about some of those necessities and we're gonna combine that with some of my top picks of the season. Let's get into it. All right, so before we begin, know that when I'm talking about basic necessities, we are actually past the point of talking about having an avalanche transceiver, having our backpack, right? Having our probe and our shovel, as well as having our radio. We are considering those essentials. That's not part of the necessities that I'm talking about, but please note that I never leave home without any of those items, those five basic items to the backcountry rider, beacon, probe, shovel, backpack, and radio, I'm stuck again, whatever that is. All right, moving on. So we'll start on this side of the table. You guys can see this pretty cool new light. This is an Oxbow light. It's actually how Oxbow kind of got into it. The radios came afterwards, but the light that they've made, and you guys can see that I've combined that with a dangle mount. So I use the dangle mount, which is basically just a big clamp that's pretty awesome. I also do use that with my GoPro. So I've got two different ones. I'll keep this in my handlebar bag. I typically keep this in the top pouch of my backpack. If I am using a helium hood and or I just want more additional light, how awesome is that? That will just clip on right there and then it's got its own battery pack with a carabiner. I clip that onto my backpack somewhere and boom, I've got 2100 lumens and it's light where I'm looking, not just where the sled is facing. All right, so there's been some questions about the, the bladder that I'm using for, for water. This is a hydro pack, it's about two liters. It's pretty nice to know throughout my day of just the water consumption. And the other key component to that is I can add things like liquid IV or something like that for some electrolytes. It also fits nicely into a handlebar bag um, behind the gauge on a Polaris snowmobile, even in the helium hood in that mesh pocket, you can kind of stuff it down in there. And as you finish drinking water, it's just a bladder. So it makes it pretty dang nice and you're just not using up the plastic. Uh, moving down this, you guys have seen a jet boil before. I'm actually kind of new to the jet boil life and it's amazing uh, the food that you can have. Uh, so nice being able to set this thing up and have some, some hot food. I would tell you that to a backcountry rider that's maybe doing it on the weekends, maybe a cold sandwich is okay, but when you're in the backcountry like I am, it is so freaking nice to have hot liquid and hot food when you're out there doing this as many days as I am. So the jet boil definitely is that necessity for us. Um, on the back here, just moving down some little stuff, having like a little mini torch, something that's windproof, something that allows me to, you know, to, to start a fire um, and that sort of thing. I keep these little pliers in my tunnel bag or in my handlebar bag rather. If you've ever had a frozen throttle or you've ever had the throttle cable come off of there, it's nice to have this thing right there at your fingertips. I'm not funneling through my other toolkits, not that I wouldn't have something like that in there, but I keep this tool by itself for just those quick fixes to your handlebars and little other things like that. Having a, a spork with a spoon on one end, it's plastic. I've seen some of these guys that run these things in titanium. You can buy these things at like a camping world. This is an awesome thing again for the handlebar bag. Uh, moving on to little stuff that goes again into a handlebar bag that is a necessity is some type of a Leatherman. It's pretty amazing. I can see all the wear and tear that I have on this thing. How many times I've been having, having to use this, whether it's fixing a sled, making some sort of a repair on gear or something like that. So a Leatherman is a pretty awesome one. Inside of this, so this is not my toolkit. My toolkit is here, but this still goes into the tunnel bag with me. I've got all kinds of things. I've got paracord. Paracord could be, used, be, could be used for all kinds of fixes, all kinds of first aid situations. You could even use this if you're gonna do like an extended column test and you were looking for some sort of avalanche condition. I've got a tow strap that's in there. If you ever had to tow out a snowmobile, again, you could use this to fix a front end part, something like that. A spare throttle. If you've ever been out with a broken throttle, what a bummer, these things aren't that expensive, but when you don't have it in the backcountry, um, that's a bummer and a, what a waste of your, of your day. So having a spare throttle is pretty crucial. Um, inside here, I've got a small roll of electrical tape. I've got another roll of Gorilla tape for two kind of two different uses there. Um, I have a primary spring. How many of you guys have been out there and can you get away with riding for a ton of your day with a broken primary spring? And I tell you that the answer is yes. But if the whole point of 
our days when we're out there is to make okay days into great days. Having something simple like this, these are 25 bucks and man, simple to change when you're out in the backcountry. It takes a few specific tools and can really make that day a great day. Um, can you get out with that broken one? The answer is yes. But man, having another one and it's 10 o'clock in the morning and everybody's ready to jam, popping one of these things in there, again, it doesn't break your back nor the bank. Most of the time you forget that you even have it. And then even if the buddy that's with you that broke his primary spring, man, do you save the day with that. So having that, that primary spring is key. A ski rubber, guys, these are $14.99. And man, have you ever tried to ride without a ski rubber? A little tech tip for you. If you didn't have one of these and you were wanting to continue to ride, if you sacrificed a pair of gloves, even a, like a stocking cap, and you put that underneath there, can you get away? Is that an okay way to get out or to continue riding? The answer is sure. But again, 15 bucks, throw it into your tunnel bag. A ski rubber is an essential, an essential piece. What else do I have in here? Because of the player's tethers and the way those tethers are, I haven't seen one break, but the idea that I'd have a spare if I did break that tether, know that it's got a magnet in it, but it really does rely on those clips. So having the clips connect to that tether, I mean, it could be the difference of having to dig into the sled and unplug it and or you have a spare tether, boom, you keep going. So that's all things that I keep in this. I even carry a spare brake lever and then I also carry some zip ties. So all those things kind of fit into that. It seems like it'd be a ton of weight guys, but in reality it's not. So moving on to that, we'll get away from that. Talk about like some awesome, awesome technology. So cool that Klein from a year ago has had the Power Cross heated glove. Now we've got the HTD, the heated inversion glove. So this is still a non-insulated, this is a riding glove. And the fact that it is now heated, a couple of battery packs here, these have been a hot seller for us. And the moment that I put my hands in these things, I knew that these were gonna be the gloves for me. So these are an every single day item and obviously a necessity to the backcountry rider. Moving on, we've got some fire starter, some type of fire starter. I think there's, there's a bunch of different stuff. There's some really cool ideas that are out there, but just anything and everything you can keep and you can have it real close to you. Boom, you need to make a fire, start a fire. I know and I get it that you've got fuel on your snowmobiles, but it is pretty nice to have something like that. Combine that with your little torch and boom, you get your people warm right away. So fire starter would be crucial. A big folding saw. I mean, we're using this thing for all kinds of reasons, right? You can see this thing is just so rigid locked in there. I've had this thing and abused it a ton, but a climb folding saw or some type of saw for cutting down wood. You've got to get your A arm freed up from a tree, whatever it looks like. Not having a saw as a backcountry rider. I don't, I don't know as I'd go out there without one. And you guys can tell climb was really thinking of everything. You've got a length of paracord as well as a whistle. That's a pretty cool thing. And I would say a basic necessity. All right. So moving into some other technology pieces here. Those of you that have ridden with me before, you know that I ride each and every day that I'm out there. I ride with some form of tracking and some sort of satellite device. So this is a Spot Global Phone. Many of you guys have heard me talk about this thing before. This thing has provided communication to the outside world, whether I was here in my backcountry, I was in Prescovi, Russia, I was in Canada, I was all over the place. It's so nice to know that I can communicate with the outside world if there was a problem. Heck, I've even ordered parts off of the mountain to a dealership so that those parts met us here at the dealership so we could get somebody fixed up, which is really cool. So it doesn't always have to be a first aid situation, but a global phone is pretty awesome. Pairing that with some sort of sat satellite tracking device, I use the Spot X. I like that I can send and receive texts. It's also, I pay for the tracking, so about every 10 minutes it's dropping a pin to my location. Between those two things, I feel like we're relatively safe. If there is a problem, somebody knows exactly where I am, and I can also give that information back to them. So. Those are two uh, basic necessities. I'm a, I'm a buff for a net gator guy, but I don't mind carrying some sort of a, a bigger, um, like full blown balaclava. And this is kind of the thinner one out of the ones that climb makes, but I figured that it was worth putting up here as a basic necessity. On days that it's ultra warm out and all you're thinking about is just how much you're gonna breathe and you don't want your goggles to fog, I would still tell you that carrying a buff or carrying some sort of balaclava, throw it into the handlebar bag or the tunnel bag or your backpack, just knowing that you have that, it's a basic necessity, especially if we end up stopping and having to stay in one area for a long time, you may certainly appreciate something like this, a lot like the heated gloves. All right, so within the toolkit, you see how this lays out. And it's a climb bag and it comes with a lot of the avalanche packs so it's pretty nice um i've got a ton of wrenches this is wrenches for all kinds of 
repairs to front suspension, to rear suspension, to shocks, uh, there are all kinds of different stuff that's in here. You've got your Allens, you've got a lot of your handlebar setup that's there, your screwdrivers, you've got a three eighths, you've got a quarter, you've got a crescent wrench, and then here you've got some uh, channel locks, I've got some wire snips, I've got some basic extensions, uh, I've got a spring puller, all kinds of different things in there. And like I said, we will have a list of this stuff uh, in the description below. Our first aid kits. Got to thank uh, Altitude Sickness and Rick Churchill for all of his insight onto this kit. I absolutely love it. You guys know I'm a, a 13 or 14. Um, continue to research my woofer, my wilderness first responder. Um, there's a bunch that's in this kit that is essentially over my pay grade, but knowing that I have a lot of the essentials and then combine that with some sort of trauma pack, uh, quick clot, uh, a lot of these things that are necessary if we have an incident or an injury out there. A lot of the stuff that we learn and we focus on in terms of Abbey training and safety, it kind of ends at airway. It ends at, let's get a positive probe, let's get that person out. But you guys can imagine, you've got an injury, especially something that's a life threat. Pretty damn awesome to know that we've got a trauma kit, we've got a way to get to skin level and make those fixes. So another uh, backcountry necessity that never leaves home. I never leave this shop without it. Uh, lastly is some sort of a layer. So I'm using this climb, sort of puffy jacket. Uh, I'd certainly put this on inside of my, you know, my outer layer there. And there's definitely been days when this was a 100% necessity, a lifesaver to me. But because it's down to what it is, you can just basically stuff this thing into one of its pockets. So it folds up into a pretty dang small pillow, doesn't take up a ton of room, and is easily one of those backcountry necessities. So hopefully, with all of this stuff, maybe a ton of it's reiterated information. We'll zoom in and kind of go over a bunch of these things as we're talking about them. But um, hopefully there's a lot of things in here that you guys already have. And if your kit is set up that way, I'd say good to go, good on you. Um, but hopefully there's some stuff that you guys can learn. Remember, comment, subscribe, all of the things you guys do with my videos. We love hearing from you guys. And we'll see you this next time.